What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Strategy Guide Chronicles. I know I've been gone for like the last five months, but I've been traveling pretty much all over. I went to Louisville, went to Oahu, I went to Vegas. I even went to California. And during all my travels, I've been thinking nonstop about the Strategy Guide Chronicles. We have a ton of guides to go through. I've been able to, on my adventures, Go check out some other used bookstores and bring home some goodies. So there's going to be a lot of content coming your way. But to start us off, let's jump right back into it. Starting off with one of my favorite games ever, Pokemon Yellow, the special Pikachu edition. So I'm going to talk as I take this out of the plastic. Now, I got Pokemon Blue when I, I don't know, when it, when it came out during Christmas time. My twin brother got Pokemon Red. I got Pokemon Blue. And we played those games so much. Um, we did get a strategy guide. It was Pokemon Red. But um, I remember that there were little differences with the games to the anime that we were watching. The interesting thing about Pokemon Yellow is that they created Pokemon Yellow to match up with the anime that we all watched as kids. So you're gonna see um, Jesse and James, you're going to see a lot of the gym leaders sprites changed as well as their lineups, their Pokemon reflect what is shown in the shows. And then you're also of course going to be given Pikachu just like in the show. So let's jump right into this and then we're going to talk more about this game. Um, this guide is like flawless, by the way. It looks incredible. It looks really good. It doesn't even look like it was used, to be honest. Like it was just kind of sitting in the plastic for like the last, I don't know, 10 plus years. Um, this guide actually came out in 1999. Publisher was Prima Games. So this is a very well taken care of guide so let's go ahead and open this up yeah this feels brand new good pokemon yellow premium's official strategy guide we've got contents becoming a pokemon trainer a walk through the world of pokemon the complete pokedex items galore pokemon checklist then we've got the awesome art here snorlax pikachu abra i Absolutely, you're gonna hear me say this over and over, but I love the artwork found in Strategy Guides. This is one of the big reasons why I love to collect them and I love to have them. All right, here we go. So Pokemon Yellow reading over here on the left side. In this book, you'll find information for Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Although Pokemon Yellow is an enhanced version of Pokemon Red and Blue, it's an entirely different game in many respects your goal is still to become a Pokemon trainer and to defeat your rival and Elite Four. But to do so, you must defeat more formidable, formidable gym leaders and smarter Pokemon. Pokemon Yellow incorporates much from the animated series. There you go. Uh, many trainer portraits have been changed to reflect their cartoon appearance. The Pokemon they battle uh, have been changed as well. For example, instead of his previous trio of electric Pokemon, Lieutenant Surge now fights with only a level 28 Raichu instead of her old troop, Sabrina now sends out her eerie level 50 Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam. To make things even more challenging, you start the game with Pikachu. It's true that Pikachu is no lightweight, but it attacks against but its attacks against Geodude and Onyx have no effect whatsoever. Starting with Pikachu means you can't sail through the game with one or two Pokemon. I had Pokemon Blue, and I think the starter I had was Bulbasaur. That was the first one that I chose. And I, yeah, Brock, Misty stood no chance against me. Um, but starting with Pikachu means you can't sail through the game um, with one or two Pokemon as you could in red and blue. You must master capturing and training a variety of Pokemon immediately to win these gym badges. In fact, or in effect, 
Pokemon Yellow offers many of the same choices Ash confronted in the animated series. Veterans of Pokemon Red and Blue will find Pokemon Yellow a more challenging version of the game. You must consider how each type of attack affects each Pokemon before you go into battle and juggle the responsibility for raising the levels of all in your party, which is very, very true. Now, for those of you guys who are watching, I'm sure you were like me, that as you started going through the game, how many of you caught all the same Pokemon that Ash did? I, when I was playing this, um, game recently, I started off with Pikachu, I picked up a Pidgey, evolved it to Pidgeotto, I picked up a Caterpie, um, evolved that to Butterfree, and then as we're going to see, once you start acquiring the other starters like Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, of course they stay on your team. And so I played this recently and my team very much reflected um, Ashes in the animated series. So I really like that they added this blurb here in the very beginning, just right off the bat, you're going to see these differences, which is really cool. Um, how these games uh, stack up, it says you may wonder just how red, blue and yellow versions differ. Pokemon red, blue are the basic versions. They're identical in terms of appearance and are the only versions that combine to allow you an opportunity to collect 150 Pokemon. Pokemon Yellow offers updated graphics scaled to mimic the animated series, a new unknown dungeon map, and a different Pokemon spread. There are no new Pokemon, just a different assortment from Red and Blue. Yellow also provides more multiplayer options. The story remains largely the same, however, tweaked to include Jesse James and the three original Pokemon. Um, one thing too is with Pokemon Yellow uh, with Jesse and James, you cannot catch Meowth, Ekans, or Coughing. Very interesting. Um, so it's going to give you the, the differences here in Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, all the different Pokemon that you can and can't catch. You also cannot um, get a Raichu in Pokemon Yellow. You cannot use the Thunderstone on Pikachu, but I believe you can trade your Pikachu to a friend evolve it there and then your friend will send Pikachu right back to you and now you have Raichu. Will Raichu follow you around? Maybe? I think so. They're the same sprites basically, right? So I don't know. It's a good question. Let me know down in the comments if you know that. Um, hard to find Pokemon and then Pokemon you can buy at the exchange center. Pokemon obtained via in-game trading. All right, so getting started, you'll notice the changes. Okay, so it just basically goes over what we've all kind of experienced in Pokemon Red and Blue. So let's go to the next page. All right, um, the many faces of Pikachu. So this is another thing that's different than Red and Blue. You've got a Pikachu character follow following you all around the map, all around the game. And at any point in time, you are more than um, able to turn around and basically click on Pikachu or select Pikachu and a face will pop up and it will show like his mood. Pikachu will not be happy to see you. There'll be a sad Pikachu, smiling Pikachu, smitten Pikachu, Pikachu in love, a uh huh Pikachu, a Pikachu is pleased with you, a shocked Pikachu. We actually got a shocked Pikachu face in Pokemon, a hopping Pikachu, and then Pikachu doesn't like it when you try to evolve it with a Thunderstone. So spoiler alert, if you want to get Pikachu in his best mood, um, you can use a bunch of potions on him and then I'll, I'll just like jack up his happiness points for some reason. Um, so it goes on. It's talking about the art of capturing Pokemon. So it's going to talk about wild Pokemon. Um, talk about, for example, skills that produce paralysis or sleep ensure success when you're capturing Pokemon. As you progress, you can acquire versions of the basic Pokeball. So you can get like Ultra Ball, Master Ball, etc. Capturing extremely rare and powerful Pokemon such as the Bird Trio of Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, the awesome Mewtwo, and even the Sneep Sleepy, even the Sleepy Snorlax, often requires you to toss as many as 50 ultra balls and i can attest to that so there's a lot of elements involved in raising a pokemon that's more than just fighting this is how a pokemon can be trained stronger than a wild um, of the same experience level 
When you train a Pokemon of your own, you influence its development. You decide whether it evolves at certain points, which skill it learns, and so on. Captured Pokemon receive attack and defense, speed, strength, special skills, bonuses from the badges you collect. You can customize your Pokemon further by equipping them with TMs and HMs, and then also feeding them vitamins like calcium, iron, carbos, and the like. I remember going all the way to the top of the tower and then buying a bunch of vitamins and just beefing up your Pokemon. Moving on, so Pokemon Yellow Guide goes into detail about evolution. It's gonna to talk to you about leveling up, elemental stones, um, trading. There's um, Pokemon that evolve only through trading. And I think I did find somebody on the map. I traded a Cubone for the Machoke. And we know that Machoke evolves into Machamp when it gets traded and so that happens in the game and also um, i used machamp for a bit i tried i know like using ash's pokemon was a given but i did try to throw in other pokemon mix like nidoking king and machamp um non-evolving pokemon and then the importance of trading moving on multiplayer games so i never got to do this back in the days um, when we had our Game Boys, I didn't really utilize the linking cable as much, but I guess you could battle your friends across the link cable. And then Pokemon All Yellow offers Colosseum 2 with new battle options. Before you can start a battle, your Pokemon must meet certain requirements. So the Poke Cup uh, mode allows you to battle three Pokemon that must be between level 50 to level 55. The Pika Cup allows you to battle three Pokemon between level 15 and level 20. And then the Petite Cup, which uh, allows you to battle three Pokemon between level 25 and level 30. They also can't exceed six foot eight and 44 pounds. That's very interesting. And then evolved Pokemon can't compete. How cute. Um, Pokemon skill type versus the chart. So we've got the whole chart here. Um, going into detail about like what is normal weak against or what's fighting you weak against and things like that. Um, you'll get normal damage uh, times four damage times two damage, half damage, quarter damage and no effect. Honestly, I thought super effective just meant double the damage, but you can see here, here's a times four. I mean, let's find a easy times four. So bug grass type to fire is like times four damage. Wow, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, I thought it was just like, uh, no effect, um, like barely had an effect, normal damage and then strong damage. But here we have no effect, quarter damage, half damage, normal damage, two times damage, times four damage. Very interesting. All right, uh, moving on, uh, do's and don'ts of this game. So play this game with a friend or two. Trading is integral to Pokemon. Um, don't concentrate on raising one character over the others. Very, very vital. I, when, when I was playing recently, I made sure that when my Pokemon reached a certain level and then the next one has to reach that and then I kind of sh shuffle them down. Um, do take advantage of the 1.5 experience bonus for trade. Wait, what? If you find yourself with a Pokemon, you must raise quickly. Try trading it to another cartridge. Traded Pokemon receive 1.5 times the experience of regular Pokemon. And that adds up in a hurry. What? Either like I totally missed this or I forgot about it, but I had no idea that traded Pokemon get that 1.5 experience bonus. Don't try to play the game from the beginning with your friends level 70 Mewtwo. Um, that sounds pretty fun. Uh, let's see. Do save often. Very, very important. I had to teach my girls that on their Nintendo Switch. Make sure you save your games, girls. Don't be fooled. Trading Pokemon, uh, trading doesn't have to be permanent. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, you can trade it back and forth between friends. I remember that. Do remember to buy antidotes and other curatives before entering dungeons. Oh man, this last playthrough, going through like rock tunnel and stuff. Uh, that's where this guy really came in handy. But uh, yeah, I, this is so annoying going through there. Don't forget, Pokemon can suffer only one negative status at a time. Okay. Uh, do try to match Pokemon in battle to maximize their effectiveness. Don't hesitate to change Pokemon during a battle. And finally, do experiment. Dude, I gotta say, 
The Pokemon games were really ahead of its time. They really packed an incredible RPG experience in such a small little cartridge that is the Game Boy. Um, so real quick, we're going to go through the walk through the world of Pokemon part one, the quick and dirty path. So this is going to give you a quick and dirty path of how to play the game. Very interesting. Um, part two, a detailed look at the world of Pokemon. So it's going to give you a detailed look what Pokemon are in what sections route one you got Pidgeys and Rattatas here in the Viridian City you can see the Pokemon it has all these items so this is a really this is uh getting into the real like in-depth part of Pokemon yellow it's going to give you all the Pokemon that are found in the wild grass um it's going to give you their sex type and it's going to give you whether they're found in red and blue and yellow it's also going to give you what items are nearby, marked by the letter on the map. And then the numbers, I believe, correspond to the different buildings. Yeah, they do right here. Different buildings. Yeah, this strategy guide is great, man. Look at all this awesome art in the background. Just the silhouettes of the Pokemon shadows. Um, really, really nice thorough maps. Um, I love how they got everything laid out. It works really well. Um, this is Brock, uh, his gym battle. You can see Brock's lineup. You can see the level and the skills that each Pokemon have. So they spare no details. They go really in depth with everything. So I'm just going to kind of speed it up and kind of walk through everything here. All right. So when you go through Mount Moon, this is where you're going to first encounter Team Rocket. So Jesse and James, and they're going to have Ekans, Coughing, and Meowth, which is really cool. Little nod to the anime. And then once you get to Cerulean City, you basically get the starters really quickly. So um, the first one is when you go into one of the houses, you're going to go into the house, and the girl's going to ask you if you're a good trainer. And she basically bases that off of how Pikachu reacts to you. And again, like I said, if you want to cheese it, just feed Pikachu a bunch of potions and he's going to love you. And then you're going to be able to get Bulbasaur from this trainer. So there you go. You get Bulbasaur. And then when you go up the bridge, battle all the trainers, um, you're going to go up towards Bill, beat Gary. And then as you go up, you're going to meet a trainer who asks you if you want a Charmander. So bam, just like that, Bulbasaur and Charmander. So now you got like three roster spots filled permanently for the game. Pikachu, Charmander, and Squirt. Uh, yeah, Pikachu, Charmander, and Bulbasaur. And then after you help out Bill and he gives you the SSN tickets, um, go through SSN, then you fight Lieutenant Surge. You can talk to an officer who's in the middle of the town and basically this woman's asking, um, you know, talking about Squirtle and needing to find a trainer who was worthy enough to raise Squirtle. So after you beat Lieutenant Surge and you show her the Thunder Badge, then she's going to give you Squirtle. Now you've got Pikachu, Trimander, Squirtle, Bulbasaur. And why would you not? use any of these starters in your lineups, you would absolutely be crazy. And here we continue on. We're going through the rock tunnel, which was so annoying because this is where you got to have flash. I think I caught like a little Voltorb that I put on my team as I went through the rock tunnel and then uh, was able to utilize flash. And then we get to Celadon City. This is where you're able to buy the drinks. For the guards, so the department, oh, the game corner and Team Rocket's hideout. That was more annoying than the Sof Sofco Tower. Team Rocket's hideout with all like the spinny little floor moving things. Yeah. And it was long. There was a lot of battles in that game, uh, in that game corner, Team Rocket hideout. Yeah, but not only that, there's some strong battles in here. You got to fight Jesse and James and then Giovanni as well. So. Um, the Game Corner um, Rockets hideout is very, very action packed. Um, if you want, you can um, hang out in the game area and play some slots and gamble and get some coins. 
You can also get all the Thunderstone, Waterstone, Firestone, Leafstone, um, all those Evolution Stones in the department store, as well as all the TMs and the strategy guide, of course, lists it all for you. All right, moving on from the Celadon City, going on to Saffron. There we've got the um, Sylph Scope to be able to defeat the ghost in the tower. Then we're in Saffron. Oh yeah, the Sylph Company. So this is where you get the Master Ball. And we all know we saved the Master Ball for Mewtwo at the end of the game. All right, there's Sabrina. And then another Snorlax block in the way. Fuchsia City Gym. And now we're into the Seafoam Islands. And this is where you encounter your very first legendary Pokemon, Articuno. Articuno, really, really cool bird. I really like the new sprite updates for the legendary Pokemon, by the way. Really, really cool. Um, getting through the Seafoam Islands, you get to head to Cinnabar Island, and that's where you're going to meet Blaine. He's got his Arcanine, Rapidash, and Ninetales. Braz in red and blue. He has a Growlithe, Ponita, Rapidash, Arcanine. Very, very similar. Just no, no Ponita this time. Um, also has the Pokemon Lab where you can take the fossil that you selected all the way back in Mount Moon. Usually, I always take uh, Kabuto because... Who likes who likes that that the omnistar guy like for real who chooses that guy kabutops all the way after you're done with cinnabar island you head all the way back to pallet town now you're back where you started but now giovanni's ready to defend his eighth badge the eighth uh, gym badge so when you fight him he's got right on nido king nido queen persian and doug trio um, the only Pokemon missing from this lineup is Rhyhorn, which is in red and blue, but Persian is not in the red and blue version. Persian is only in the yellow version again, which matches right up with the anime. So after you're done getting all the badges for me, I went and I got Zapdos at the electric warehouse or whatever before i went to the elite four even though i didn't use zapdos i don't know why i just felt like i needed to go get that legendary bird first so i went and got zapdos then i went back all the way to viridian city and then i went up victory road um as you get through the first part of victory road it's going to take you into a cave and that's where you're going to find the last legendary bird which is moltres so the elite for the indigo plateau we've arrived here we go we've got lorelei the master of water pokemon she's got a dugon cloister slowbro jinx and lapras then after that bruno's lineup machamp onyx hitmonlee hitmonchan and onyx two onyxes um and then after that agatha the master trainer of ghost and poison she's got gengar arbok Hunter, Golbat, and another Gengar. Wow. And then after that, you've got Lance, Master Trainer of Dragon Pokemon. Dragonite, definitely one of my favorite Pokemon. Dragonite, Aerodactyl, Dragonair, Dragonair, and Gyarados. Gyarados is really cool too, but it takes a lot of commitment to raise that Magikarp. But Gyarados is definitely great. And then last but not least, as you get through, Gary's just wiping the dust off his clothing beating lance and then you show up and you take the crown right from him he's got a jolteon nine tails cloister executor alakazam sand slash so this is determined upon like how well you do against gary throughout the game so this is pattern A with Jolteon. If you defeated your rival at Oaks Lab and on Route 22 at the, um, at the start of the game, then he has Jolteon, which is the hardest of the EV evolutions. If you defeated your rival at Professor Oaks Lab but lose to him on the battle at Route 22, then he's going to have a Flareon, Cloyster, and Magnemite. But 
if you lose to your rival at Oaks Lab and lose to him at Route 22, then he's going to have a Vaporeon, Mag Magnemite, and then a Nine Tails. So really cool. Got the different um, patterns there. Um, in red and blue, there's the different patterns there, which is cool. I'm glad that they put um, red and blue information in this strategy guide. So after Gary, it shows you the power plant. And then after the power plant where you find Zapdos, the unknown dungeon where you can find Mewtwo waiting for you. So um, this strategy guide has the original map. It is still intact here. And I don't think I'm going to detach that anytime soon. Really, really cool. Now that we've gone through the walkthrough tutorial, um, the strategy guide is going to take you through the complete Pokedex so you can check out all the different Pokemon. You can see all the TMs that um, they can use and then all their skills and everything like that, which is really cool. So we're just going to fly through here real quick. We got all the legendary birds and Mewtwo. All right, here we go. At the back, we've got items galore. So um, many items you encounter as you travel the world of Pokemon are crucial to completing your quest. If you become stuck and you can't find something, or if you wonder what certain items do, refer to the following tables. So you got remedies, medicines, vitamins for use in battle only, PP potions, beverages, necessary tools, mystery stones, fossils, miscellaneous. So it's going to tell you the name, if they cost anything, if you can buy it, and then it'll tell you where you can buy it or find it. And then it'll tell you what the function is of those items. And then of course the TMs and HMs as well will tell you how much they cost, where the location is, and what the skill learned is. So here at the back, you've got a Pokemon checklist. So as you help Professor Oak fulfill his dream of collecting every known Pokemon, use this checklist to keep track of the Pokemon you see and capture. If you're playing Pokemon Yellow and own a Game Boy printer, you can print out Pokedex information for each Pokemon you see or collect and apply the sticker. That is sick. That is so cool. I did not know that. How fun. Um, I definitely do not have a Pokemon or not a, not a Pokemon. I, I do not have a Game Boy printer. I, I did find a Game Boy camera when I was home in California the other week. I didn't bring it home with me. But um, how cool is that, dude, to be able to stick those in here? I wonder how much that paper would cost. All right, we're getting close to the end of the strategy guide. It's going to end with this Pokemon checklist. Let's see what's at the end here. We've got an advertisement for the Pokemon trading card game, which is also really sick. I do have that strategy guide and I cannot wait to get to that episode. We'll get there soon enough. Um, we've also got advertisements for the Pokemon Snap game for Nintendo 64, Jet Force Gemini, uh, a game I remember playing at my friend's house all the time. And then we've got PrimaGames.com. Oh man, the good old days. Look how old this website looks. And then some more awesome Pokemon art at the end. And that will do it for the Pokemon Yellow Special Pikachu Edition Prima's Official Strategy Guide. Thank you guys so much for watching episode six of the Strategy Guide Chronicles. What a very, very special episode with this really awesome game. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please drop down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about the Pokemon Yellow Special Pikachu Edition. Um, please also consider joining the channel as a member. Not only do you get exclusive member only posts, but you're also going to get members only video bonus content. I've got a lot of bonus content for my other episodes and there will be bonus content for this video here. So don't miss out on it. I would greatly appreciate your support. And I cannot wait for the next episodes. If you're your first time here, please hit the subscribe button on the channel. Like this video if you like this type of content and you want to see more of it. And I will see you all on the next one.